UFC Bite the Curb in 4K, 1080. Those are two different resolutions. What's going on, guys? It is your boy here. Of course, the combat consultant, the soundboard guy, Jacob Cooperman. And we got to talk about all of these UFC events getting canceled. Conor McGregor's out of his fight against Michael Chandler. And Robert Whitaker now has himself a new opponent, Ikram Aliskarov. And man, while I don't mind the replacement fights that they brought in there, Alex Pereira versus Yuri Prohoshka too. And of course, as for the Rob Whitaker fight, I mean, you put Rob in a fight with anyone, I'm going to want to watch it because I'm a huge fan of his. Well, I don't mind those. I just think it's, it's sad that the UFC does have this happen from time to time. I don't want to say ruined, but kind of spoiled what would have been a really, really fun month of fights to have. I mean, we would have had so many different fun fights, and we still do, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm super excited for Lopez versus Ortega, but injuries, man, they're a tough, unavoidable part of the sport, especially with these higher profile fights. I mean, McGregor versus Chandler was going to be huge. You don't want to see it ideally happen like that. And I know a lot of people now are saying that McGregor wasn't even taking this fight seriously anyways, and that the sport has passed him by, but realistically, McGregor McGregor is still a big draw. I don't care what anyone says. It's still Conor McGregor. He could do coke the week up to a fight and everyone would be wondering about what he looked like because it's just Conor McGregor, right? He has his name etched in stone in not only the MMA history books, but the fighting history books. I think part of that is also kept alive by the fact that, yeah, he still has so many different antics going on. Conor will always be Conor. Injuries aren't uncommon for him. He's had plenty of them. What's different about this one, I'm not sure because in all of his past fights, he's been able to fight through or go into fights with those injuries. I don't know, could be that he just wasn't taking good care of his body. He's not like a spring chicken like he once was when he was super lasered in and focused, right? He doesn't, he can't just fall back on the fact that, oh yeah, I, I've gotten a, a shin injury, but you know, I've been training for so hard for these last three, four months that I can fall back on that trip. We can't say that anymore because he's been dabbling in other things. So it's unfortunate to say, but I think an injury now in his career that might have been something that he went into a fight with earlier on could be potentially a fight ender for Connor, which sucks, but you'd rather, I think, see him come in later in the year. At least that's just me. I also think it's tricky now that Connor does kind of have this rap amongst the community of not really making it to fights because poor Chandler has just been getting baited for two years straight. Two shots of vodka. McGregor has this vibe now tailing him that he is this guy that like can't make it or doesn't take his fights super duper seriously anymore. So I feel like the more time we wait for it and the more the thing gets pushed back, I think it steals some of the hype away from the fight because no fan realistically is going to believe it. Like I was talking to a ton of fans when I did press of the PFL this past weekend. No one in the community really believes that McGregor's going to get into a cage until he does get into the cage anymore. And that's professionals saying that, right? Like this is fans. And then I was working media at the PFL and even the media guys, guys, that wrote for ESPN, guys that wrote for Sherdog, we're saying you gotta believe it when you see it. Until the night of, until he gets into the cage, you cannot count McGregor into a fight. Which sucks, so I wanna see how hyped people really get for this fight. I think for Chandler, honestly, it's a nice money fight, but there's other fights out there for you. You're essentially wasting time, and I don't doubt that he's improving his game every single day in the gym, but you are on a certain level wasting time waiting around for this guy who may or may not get a fight down, even when it's on paper. That's the craziest thing is that this bout agreement had been signed, and I'm not trying to rag on Connor, right? An injury is an injury. But there is the fact that like he doesn't live a lifestyle that's really conducive to fighting. So even when you have everything signed, there could just be this fight negotiation stopping injury that Conor Cruz where it's like, all right, um, if I was younger and I wasn't doing coke and drinking and partying all the time, I probably could recover in time. If I'm Chandler, that's a little bit too much of a risk, I feel. It seems like the contract's already signed, so I don't know if that's something where he has to re-sign. I'd have to look it up, but if they're still locked in contractually, he doesn't really have a lot of wiggle room here. I think the best thing you can do if you're Chandler right now is just stay busy, stay training, right? Like, use this opportunity, and he seems like a really hardworking and kind of like smart guy. Make a mockery out of Connor and make a name off of him. Real quick, too, I just want to talk about the replacement fight that they got for this. Man, Yuri Prohaska versus Alex Pereira, too. Yuri looked good at some points in that fight until he got clipped. That's the big thing that a lot of guys run into with Alex is his hooks. Gary, his last time out, obviously got a big win over Alexander Rakic, where he just kind of like steamrolled him and dozed him over. I'm going to be interested to see how this next fight plays out, especially when they have, Yuri's camp has tape on Alex Pereira and Alex Pereira vice versa has tape on Yuri. So yeah, contrary to the title of this video, I guess UFC isn't really biting the curb in 4K. More like tripping, falling, and getting their shirt a little bit dirty and then going and cleaning off and continuing on with their day. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video for this week. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. For now, it's been your boy, the combat consultant, the soundboard god, Jacob Cooperman. And I'll see you in the next one. Deuces.